Hey, it's Ryan Gordon, and I wanted to talk to you today about the way we show game controllers to end users. And I know you're skeptical about this, but hold on, and I'll make it worth your while. So, SDL has the system, and has for a long time, where we can take any random joystick that might get plugged in and make it look like an Xbox controller uh, to the game developer. So, even when you plug the thing in, it looks at its database that it keeps that it maintains itself, or that the user has configured for their own personal controller and say, ah, when this controller is plugged in, we know that this button is button number three, and that actually is in this position on the controller, or this is uh, axis number five, but it's actually the trigger on the left-hand side. Uh, and you plug in a different one, and it might be button number 12 and axis number two over here, but, um, but it keeps track of all these doohickeys and controls on every joystick it knows of, which is quite a large amount at this point. Um, so, in terms of physical position, SDL has solved that problem. You can, you don't need to have a gamepad configuration screen in your game. You can just always know that this is always the north button, this is always the south button, regardless of what the magic number is under the hood. Um, but the problem is this does not have any system to show you what those buttons look like on a given controller. Um, and you can't tell the, your users, just press the north button here. So here's a screenshot of the PC version of Spider-Man Miles Morales, and I had a PlayStation 5 controller plugged in when I took this screenshot. You can see all sorts of PlayStation iconography on this screen. You know, got one over here and here, and it's telling you that if you push the circle and triangle button, it'll do a finisher and beat this dude down, and if you hit L1 and R1 together, it'll grab this thing that's in the distance and pull it towards him. Uh, so I dodged this dude that was shooting at me and plugged in an Xbox controller, and the iconography changes. It's same instructions, do a finisher on this guy or grab this barrel here, but now it's the B button, the Y button, or left bumper, or right bumper to grab this. Um, that's what you want a game to do. It would be very, very confusing if I plugged in that Xbox controller and it said, do a triangle and a circle here. Um, if you were to be on Xbox and it would say, pay F to pay respects, you'd be like, I don't even know, uh, I don't have a keyboard, what am I supposed to do with this? So you need a better system than that. So. I've built a little library on top of SDL3, which SDL has solved the physicality problem by saying we know where in the player's hand a button is, but it doesn't know what they look like. So I've built a separate library that goes on layers on top of that and says, okay, when you plug in a controller, you plug in an Xbox controller, it can say, ah, I know what those look like. And then if you were to plug in a PlayStation controller, it says, I know what those look like too. And it gives you back uh, bitmaps that you can use to show the user to say, this is the button. I When I say, instead of saying press the north button, this is exactly what it looks like, and you can show that to the user. And it should, in theory, if they're in the database, uh, match what they're holding in their hand. And it has some fallbacks to it. You can give it a very specific uh, thing. Like, it'll look for the, the controller's GUID to say, oh, we know exactly what this controller looks like. Or it can query for metrics and say, this controller is meant to be an Xbox controller, even if it's not from Microsoft. So show, you know, Xbox stuff there or PlayStation or whatnot like that. And then falling back, it'll say, if it doesn't look like anything else we recognize, it probably looks like an Xbox. So we'll do that. Um, and it's pretty simple to use. There's a little bit of setup. You, there's an init function, but generally there's three functions you need to use this library. You got a loaded database. It's a very small file, a couple of kilobytes that we that we supply with the library. Um, and then once that's loaded, you have access to any data, any um, joysticks that the library knows about. Then when you, as a user plugs in a gamepad, you feed that gamepad to the library and say, "Give me information about this specific gamepad." And it'll do all those lookups I was talking about before. And then when you want to show them a button, or if you want to prepare ahead of time, you say, "Okay, give me a bitmap for." a button or an axis that involves that controller. And you say, give, for this device, give me this specific button, X, Y, start, back, whatever, at this size. Now this is the important thing right here, this 128. We're saying give me a 128 by 128 pixel uh, bitmap that I can show to the user. But this window right here, if you were to make a game that fit in this window, this is 1024 by 768. and you know, 128 by 128 might frankly be too big for this window, but sooner or later, someone's going to play this game that fits in this window on a 4K display or an 8K display, or maybe someday we'll be playing them on 32K displays. And 
as this window were to scale up, if I were to give you this button, this would be too small. It would You'd have to scale this, and then it's going to look blurry or blocky, depending. And, you know, nobody needs their buttons to look like that. Now, as a confession, these buttons came from Wikipedia, which shows them at 20 pixels by 20 pixels. And when you scale that up for a 4K display, it doesn't look too good. So what I did... Uh, uh, I had two options here, and I took, chose the second one. The first one is you say, well, you have the database have these images in different formats. And uh, you can be like, okay, here's your 128 one, then 512, a kilobyte, uh, you know, 4K, 8K, whatever. The problem is you start making bigger and bigger images. It's never going to be big enough for what comes out next. And um, the, the, the database just bloats and bloats. So instead, these things are SVG files, which means that... They're little tiny files. They look like this. You know, they, they look a little XML-y, but, you know, it basically just describes how something should be drawn instead of the actual pixels of it. And when you, uh, at runtime, you can make it look like whatever size you want. And it will always look crisp, whether it's Xbox or PlayStation. At any size, it can be crisp and look correct um, no matter what game, what size your game is running at, or what future monitor it might run on that we haven't even dreamed of yet. Uh, and more importantly, the size in the database is incredibly small, and it does not change as time goes on, um, whether you're using Xbox or PlayStation or whatever comes next. So that's my pitch. Simple library, not that much code, not that much data. Um, I think it's going to be incredibly useful for games that want to build this and make sure that the user's controller always looks good on the screen and in their hands. And what I'm looking for now is artists that can do scalable vector graphics uh, to help me build out this database, because I'm not an artist. I'm a programmer. No one wants to see my art. Um, and I, I think this is going to be so helpful. So, uh, you know, link in bio, as they say. And, I you know, come check out the project, see what you think. All right, that's it. Thank you very much.